lunch. Um, I don't think there was that much food waste, but uh, that was it. That was our objective. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Liz Goodwin. I'm Chief Executive of RAP and the Waste and Resources Action Programme. And RAP is the UK-wide organisation which delivers the Zero Waste Scotland programme. And I'm delighted to be here at, at the first conference for Zero Waste Scotland. It's exciting to be at the start of a new chapter of our work in Scotland. Inevitably, there's a degree of change involved, but I can say unreservedly that the creation of Zero Waste Scotland has been a very positive development for RAP. In particular, it's helping us to focus our thinking when we develop our new business plan because it makes sure that we really do take into account all the needs of the different nations that we work in. Zero Waste Scotland is a vehicle which gives our funder, the Scottish Government, and customers here in Scotland the best of both worlds. It's focused on a Scottish programme, fully accountable to Scottish ministers, but also able to draw on the expertise and joined up thinking and scale that can be achieved by being part of a UK-wide organisation. And so this combination of Scottish focus and UK expertise is a theme that I hope will run through this afternoon's session, the purpose of which is to hear from some frontline organisations who are working with, both in partnership with us in Scotland and also UK-wide to make progress towards zero waste. We'll hear from our four speakers, each of them a leader in their field, about the steps their organisations are taking to support zero waste goals. First up will be Samantha Fuller, an Alison Development Manager for Scottish and Southern Energy. SSE is the first of the major energy companies in the UK to directly invest in anaerobic digestion, supported by capital funding from Zero Waste Scotland for an 80,000 tonne a year AD facility in Ayrshire which is open to, due, due to open next year. Then we'll hear from Ronnie Hines, Chief Executive of Fife Council. Fife is well known for being progressive on the sustainability agenda, and the council there is leading the way with food waste collections, and it too is looking at the developing, development of AD facilities. Our third speaker will be Ian Rayson, who's Corporate Communications Director for Nestle, who are signatories to the Courthold Commitment, and who recently achieved zero waste from its factory operations in Gervan. And finally, we'll hear from Bruce Holmes of Bar Limited, who are a leading construction company working to reduce waste to landfill. I won't speak for long as these um, frontline practitioners, I'm sure you'll want to hear from them, but I'd just like to say a few words with you this afternoon about some of the challenges that we're tackling, not just in Scotland, but at the UK. How can businesses best engage with zero waste? What are the big issues that we need to help businesses with? And how do we provide the best support in a climate of having fewer resources? I'll begin with the latter point and work backwards. Let's not beat about the bush. Um, we know that public spending, the public spending review will have an impact both on our funding here in Scotland and across the UK. It means we will have to reduce our spending in some areas and we'll have to change the way in which we do some things. But I honestly welcome the fact that it will help to keep us nimble. The changes will help our continued focus on delivering value for money, and that has to be good for everyone. We're talking to our funders at the moment about, about um, funding levels and budgets for next year, so it'd be premature to go into any detail. But regardless of the funding situation, we're pulling together our next business plan. And we're working hard to make sure it's as flexible as it can be to changes in priorities differences in priorities across the nations and changes in budgets. We've already got a clear steer from the Scottish Government in the form of the Zero Waste Plan, which is fantastic because it gives us real clarity and we're working hard to get the others to catch up. Um, we've been working hard as well, speaking to key stakeholders to get a feeling of what they think we should do more of and what we should stop doing. But the, clear, the clear message we're getting from all of that is that we should see a significant shift up the waste hierarchy so much more focus on waste prevention, on design, and better resource efficiency. We really need to start, I think, an honest dialogue about the whole issue of consumption and support innovations and behaviour change which enable us to use resources overall. We'll continue to address particular areas like recycling, in particular business waste, SMEs, 
Uh, food waste will continue to be very important to us, preventing it in the first place and then treating it to recover en energy so we continue to reduce the amount of waste going to landfill. Reducing food waste still represents one of the most significant things that we can work on to um, help with resource efficiency. Voluntary agreements will continue to drive a lot of our work. We know from experience that these initiatives have a very major and very practical part to play in improving resource efficiency. And the voluntary approach really allows our UK expertise, uh, the, you, allows the industry to use the UK expertise to come up with its own brilliant innovations and then convert them into real practical solutions. And that's all without the burden of legislation. So what are the big issues that business can make a difference in? How can business as innovators help us towards that vision of zero waste? Last year we, report, we produced some research which looked at that very question. It showed that implementing 13 quick win strategies ranging from reducing food waste to lean production methods could help to contribute to up to 10% of the target reduction in UK domestic greenhouse gas emissions by 2020. And this year, we moved, on to, moved that study on to look at other impacts, so how those same strategies could help wider environmental um, food and mineral scarcity concerns. Only last month, the UK National Security Strategy listed short to medium-term disruption in international supplies of resources, such as food and mineral, that were essential to the UK as a Tier 3 priority. And to give that some context, that that's the same level of risk as disrupted oil supplies. The security strategy also says that by 2030, population growth will mean that global demand for food and energy will rise by up to 50% and water by up to 30%. And critically, it also says that resource scarcity increases the likelihood of conflict. Last December, RAP recognised the need to have a better understanding of material and water use in the UK and to how resource efficiency could help address those, those issues. And the Cabinet Secretary talked this morning about the results of that research, and I'd encourage you to have a look at the website to, to see more details of it. The, the, the amount of minerals and water that could be saved by taking, uh, taking action and implementing those 13 strategies. As we move up the waste hierarchy, we're considering our role in both reuse, but also committed to helping others reduce waste. We'll continue to work with businesses, civil society and others to reduce food waste. We knew that this was an important issue in terms of tackling climate change, but now we actually also know the impact it has in terms of um, water impact. So let me tell you about a piece of related research that RAP's due to publish later this month. We've been working with WWF to look at which foods are responsible for the most amount of wasted water. And just to give you a taste for the results, I'll tell you about potatoes. Um, avoidable potato waste is responsible for 20 million cubic metres of wasted water each year in the UK. That's the same as 10 times the amount of bottled water that's sold in the UK. And that's just potatoes. And a further 12.5 million cubic metres of water is wasted abroad. From the author of the same report, we've worked up some interesting facts about the most water-efficient countries to produce foods. And from a water efficiency perspective, we've discovered that rice is more efficiently produced in parts of the USA than it is in, in, the, in the traditional paddy fields in Southeast Asia. Um, but how about this? The UK holds all the cards when it comes to carrots and potatoes. Um, in a world where, where water is increasingly limited, the UK also has a high competitive advantage, producing peas, oats, wheat, barley, and even peppers. Perhaps some of this isn't actually very surprising, but it's still very valuable information when it comes to procuring supply chains and reducing waste. So I hope you can see how some of these feedings really, findings really chime with some of the major issues that the world faces, not just the UK. And as I said, this re research will be available later this month. So whether it's waste, water or primary resource use, it's clear there are some big issues facing our economy, which business and to some extent the public sector can be a fulcrum to drive change. We're about to hear from some of the leading businesses here in Scotland that are, are embracing resource efficiency. However, I've still got, certainly got a concern that these businesses and others like them are the exception and not the rule. As we develop our next business plan, I want to think about why some businesses aren't there yet and what we could do to make it easier for them. We all know there are lots of financial benefits to be had, so we must take a hard, long look in the mirror 
and ask ourselves why resource efficiency isn't happening as fast as we'd like it to. Perhaps it's about engagement. Do we need to do more to raise awareness about the benefits? Do we need to try and make it even easier to, to make, make it even easier to do? Do we need to make the relevance more obvious? What sort of role can we have when markets and supply chains are increasingly being, becoming global? Can we reverse some of those trends? Should we reverse some of those trends and move towards a, a closed-loop economy that is UK-based? I'm not going to pretend I have all the answers to these questions, but I promise you they're questions that we are taking very seriously as, I, as we develop our plans for the future. And most importantly, as Ian said this morning, we want to work with you to develop the answers. So if you've got thoughts on any of that, then please let us know. That's everything I'd like to say. Thank you very much for coming again today and for listening. I hope you've had an interesting conference so far and that you'll be able to take some inspiration and insight away from this afternoon's speakers. Thank you.